Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Today's lesson, the title of today's lesson is, We are above all nations upon the face of the earth. Once again, the title of today's lesson, today's lesson is entitled, We are above all nations upon the face of the earth. So once again, brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, don't turn to the left or to the right, or you will get hit in the mouth. Now, we must walk the straight way of the Most High's commandments. Go ahead and grab your books, and we'll go through these scrolls like we normally do to validate that we are above all nations upon the face of the earth. Now, we're going to start off at Genesis. Genesis chapter 26, verse 4. Now, I had done this lesson already yesterday, and I had one verse to go, and I've got, I got hit with a virus and had to shut the whole thing down. So I've got to get it done. It must be done. All right, here we go. Uh, Genesis chapter 26, and we will read verse 4. And verse 4 of Genesis chapter 26 reads, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So let it be clear that statutes, judgments, and precepts and laws was here long before Moses. So you understand that. Moses was given the Ten Commandments at Sinai, and we were not given that prior to that. But there were laws in place long before Moses got on the scene. So you are to understand that. All the nations of the earth are blessed through the house of Israel. That has been the covenant that was established with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Now, the current nations that we're in, America and all the other European nations, etc., what they fail to understand is that their blessings are due to the fact by default that they are to sustain us. They are to sustain the children of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth. So their riches have been gained by means of robbery and theft. They have taken that which belonged to us and to other peoples. And with their riches, they're able to quote unquote sustain themselves and sustain the house of Israel, for we are in their clutches. Okay, we are in captivity. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14. Let's turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we will read verse 14. And verse 14 of Deuteronomy chapter 6 reads, Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. So we were instructed that the people that are round about us, you need to take a very close look at those that are, that are around you in the many nations in which you live. We were instructed clearly that whomever they worship as God, we were not to worship that idol, that deity of the nations in which we were scattered in and of the people that were around about us. Now, let's jump down to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Verse 6 reads, For thou art an holy people unto Yah thy strong one. Yah thy strong one has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, singular, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. 
So we are to let our sons and daughters know that we are a special people. We are the people of the Most High. We are his sons and daughters. And that we are special above everyone upon the face of the earth. So says the Most High. So I want you to think of how important that would be for your grandsons to know. For your sons to know. Regardless of their ages, of exactly who they are, who they are, who we are as a people. To both our sons and our daughters. Because once we understand clearly that we are these people, and we are the people of the Most High, then when you look at a fellow Israelite, that's what you see. You see an Israelite. You, saw, you see your brother. You see a son of the Most High. And if we are the apple of the eye of the Most High, we are the apple of his eye, when you look at a fellow Israelite, you're looking at the apple of the Most High's eye. And you're going to be careful how you treat him and how you interact with him because there will be consequences for that. So we are to understand that we are a special people above everyone else, that we are not the same. And we are not to try to be like anyone else. So make sure that you stress this to your sons and your daughters. Now, let's move to chapter 10. We're still in Deuteronomy. We're going to move to chapter 10 and we will read verse 15. Chapter 10, verse 15 of Deuteronomy reads, Only Yah had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. So there were many families upon the earth, and the Most High made a choice to choose the house of Israel. And their seed, so our forefathers, were chosen. Okay, we were chosen. And thus... <clears throat> Our seed, we are to teach our seed, our children, that we are above all nations. Now, this is not for us to be haughty. This is not, this is not for us to do this in arrogance. Okay, because the Most High made plain. He did not choose us because we were the most in number. We were the least in number of all the peoples. And the land of Canaan, once we were taken to that land and given that land, he did not give it to us for our righteousness sake. We pretty much got that land because the Canaanites that were in the land were doing all manner of things that were abomination before the Most High. So we did not gain that land for our righteousness sake. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Let's move over one chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we will read verse 9. And verse 9 of Deuteronomy chapter 11 reads, And that ye may prolong your days in the land, which ye swear unto your fathers, to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Now, contrary to popular belief and thinking, peoples of the earth actually believe that America is the land of milk and honey. It is not. The land of milk and honey is the land of Israel. This is the land mass that the Most High had prepared for his people Israel. So I want you to understand that. This land flow of milk and honey is what was prepared for us as we were being brought through the wilderness over those 40 years. The Most High had prepared a place for us. That place is Canaan. Now, keep in mind of the parity between the Most High and his people and J.C. and his people. So J.C. is supposed to have died and gone to prepare a place for you, some place that we have never heard of. All right? And in his father's house, there are many mansions. That's what he's saying. Now, I have read you the dimensions in Ezekiel in previous videos. The dimensions of the Most High's house. And nowhere in there does Ezekiel mention that there are mansions in there. 
something for you to consider. So the land prepared for the house of Israel is the land of Canaan. And that's the land that the Most High promised to our forefathers. So you see the parity between the Most High preparing a land for his people and J.C. dying and going preparing some house, some place that's got some mansions in the sky. This you must consider. Let's move down to verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter 11 reads, A land which Yah thy strong one, strong one careth for. The eyes of Yah thy strong one are always upon it. From the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. So the land of Israel, the Most High, his eyes, his eyes are always upon that land. From day to day. From the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. His eyes are always there. It is perpetual. So all the things that are taking place right now within the Holy Land, the Most High is aware of it. You have those there claiming to be Israel. They call themselves Israelis. All manner of violence and wickedness is being done in the land. The house of Israel was instructed that we were not to vex and oppress the stranger within our gates that came for sanctuary within our lands. Yet the Israelis, they vex and oppress the North Africans that have actually migrated to the land. Of all those that they have gathered from what they call the diaspora of the Jews, the black Jews, the Falashas, and those from Ethiopia and everywhere else were the last to be brought to Israel. And once that was done, the Israeli government sterilized the women of Ethiopia, who these women say they are Jews. We are not Jews, we are Israelites. So I want you to understand that there's no place in prophecy that it states that when the house of Israel was gathered and brought back to the land, that one tribe would sterilize another. That is not stated in here. What is stated clearly, Ezekiel said that the two houses, both the north and the south, Judah and Israel, or Judah and Samaria, what would happen is they will be brought together as one stick. It didn't say that one tribe would take another tribe and sterilize them or put them in prison camps in the middle of the desert. These people are not the house of Israel, these Israelis, and you will see them ran out. And that is being fast forwarded every day if you're keeping your eyes on the land to see, to be informed on exactly what's taking place there. Side note, when it comes to the house of Israel, there are many that were left in the land and around the land. And the worst of the worst were sent as far away from the land as possible. These are those rotten figs so rotten that they cannot be eaten. Now, we are those rotten figs. We are on the northern hemisphere of the earth. We are one, the leaders. We are of the governor's tribe of Judah, and we are of the priestly tribe, the tribe of Levi. And the uh, leaders were the chief in the trespass. If the leaders go astray, the people go astray. Therefore, the leaders were sent as far away as possible, while some still remain in and around the land. Notice the treatment of the Palestinians. Notice the treatment of us. We may come to the understanding that the vast majority of those people are our brothers and sisters and that we are indeed the house of Israel. And that's why you see the treatment between 
how the police treat us over here, how the police in the military of the Israeli government treat the Palestinians over there. Same tactics. Same exact tactics. Because these governments are ran by the same people. We will figure this out. Now, let's move to, uh, we've just done uh, chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 11, we've read verse 12. Now, let's go down to uh, verse 16. Let's move down to verse 16, same chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verse 16 reads, Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside, and serve other gods, and worship them. So we are being warned that we, not, that we are not to turn aside and start worshiping anything other than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, other than the strong one of Israel who delivered us out of Egypt. If you did not deliver us out of Egypt, out of, the bond, out of being bondmen to those Egyptians, you are not God. You are not our God if you did not deliver us out of Egypt. Simple as that. Now, we'll move to verse 25 through 28 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. And verse 25 of Deuteronomy chapter 11 reads, There shall no man be able to stand before you, for Yah your strong one shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. So, currently, the men of Israel and all the nations, we are disrespected. We are beaten up. We are killed. And all of this goes without any forms of punish punishment. Okay, those who do these things to us, there's no punishment for it. There's no punishment mechanism in place. So, once we return back to this law and we start doing the things that are right in the sight of the Most High, the fear and the dread of us will be upon every nation upon the face of the earth because we are above all the nations. We're supposed to be, but we're not because we have fallen away and we have transgressed against the strong one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have transgressed against our God. So therefore, we have been stripped. But once we return back onto these laws, the fear of these nations will be upon us. Will be upon them, excuse me. Okay, so they will be afraid of you. So right now, they're killing us and locking us up. And there's no punishment for it. But you will see with your own eyes that to merely speak against a man of Israel will carry a punishment. You will see this. So our captivity is being turned because we're returning back to this law. The more of us do it, the faster this thing will become. So continue to turn back to the most high in his laws. Verse 26, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. 27, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of Yah thy strong one, which I command you this day. Verse 28, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of Yah your strong one, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. <clears throat> we have not known a JC. We have not known a Haley Selassie and all the other gods of these man-made religions. The house of Israel, we were not given religion. We were given laws. And there is a difference. You are to be mindful of that. So we are not to turn our side out of the way and start going after these worthless idols. That will be nothing. This will be to our hurt. We are not to do this. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 14. We'll read verse 1 and verse 2. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1 reads, Ye are the children of Yah, your strong one. Okay. You are the children of the Most High. This did not say all the nations of the earth. This does not, this does not say everybody. 
Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, a bloodline, a seed line of people, letting us know exactly who God's children is. So when you hear we are all God's children, you tell that person that said that you're incorrect. And then you can take them and show them where they're incorrect. And if they have any contention with what you have shown them, then you know that they are contentious with the Most High's word and the words of his prophets. Now, verse 14, once again, ye are the children of Yah, your strong one. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Verse 2, for thou art an holy people unto Yah. We are a holy people, but we have transgressed and have done things that are unholy, things that are contrary to the Most High's laws, contrary to the instructions that we were given. We are to correct that. Let me reread verse 2. For thou art a holy people, unto you are thy strong one. If you realize you're holy, then you start doing holy things. You understand? So you're holy. So make sure you start doing things that are holy, which means you should be walking in accordance to this law. And you have chosen thee, we were chosen, to be a peculiar people, strange, different, set apart people, unto himself, singular, above all nations upon the face of the earth. So you've just read that again. So anyone that tells you we're all the same, we are not all the same. We are set apart people, peculiar people unto the Most High Himself. We are His. We are His daughters and His sons. And He killed everything, man and beast, firstborn in Egypt, on our behalf. We are the apple of His eye. We are His saints. We are His servants. We are His sons and His daughters. You are to remember that and to teach that to your sons, your daughters, and your grandsons, and your granddaughters. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we will read verse 5. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we will read verse 5. Verse 5 of Deuteronomy chapter 18 reads, For you are thy strong one, has chosen thee, excuse me, for Yah thy strong one has chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of Yah, him and his sons. So, <clears throat> verse 5 says, for God has chosen him out of thy tribes. Him who? The Most High has chosen Aaron out of all of our tribes the, tribes of, the tribe of Levi was chosen, and the man Aaron was specifically chosen to stand to minister before the Most High, him and his sons, not his daughters. Him and his sons forever. It's a perpetual covenant that he has with Aaron and his sons and the tribe of Levi. So if you are a female claiming to be preaching or teaching, you're incorrect. And if you're following an individual doing this, female, you're also incorrect. This word, the ministers of the Most High are men. They're not just any man. They're not any man from any place. He is an Israelite. And not just any Israelite. He is an Israelite specifically of the tribe of Levi. And specifically of the sons of Aaron. And you do see here in this verse, forever. You look up forever, and so that way you can determine what forever means. All right. So we have covered Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 5. Now we will go to Deuteronomy chapter 23, and we will read verse 13 and 14. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 13 and verse 14. And verse 13 reads, And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh 
from thee. What this means, back in the days of old, our weapon had a paddle. In the Marine Corps infantry, it's called an E-tool. It's pretty much a shovel that can be folded up. You can carry it on your hip. That way, when you do utilize the restroom, i.e. number two, you can turn, you can dig a hole and cover up that excrement. All right? So, we were instructed to have a paddle on our weapon. That way, when we step abroad or we step outside of our camps and we eased our bowels, we would take that paddle and cover up that excrement. Why? The next verse tells us. Verse 14. For Yah, thy strong one, walketh in the midst of thy camp. Now, if you let your enemies teach you and tell you out of their New Testament, and I want you to notice there are many Israelites on YouTube speaking about Esau this and Esau that. And Esau is red, and Esau represents red and the pars, and et cetera, et cetera. You've got Esau in the back who wrote his own book. The whole thing when Esau, the king of Esau speaking, the head of them speaking is all in red, and they haven't recognized that and figured that out yet. But they're quick to tell you Esau is red and Esau is this and that. We have the Most High speaking up front. Most High said he gave us this word. He gave us the end in the beginning. All that we need to know is up front. For those of you who are parents, you've never had your child. You've never read a book to your child and started in the back. You've never done it. So, everything that we need to know, the Most High said he's given it to us up front. You go in the back. You, up front, you've got the greatest of all prophets speaking. You've got the Most High speaking. You can't find red print up here nowhere. You go in the back, it's full of red print. And you ought to ask yourself why. Now, <clears throat> let's continue with verse 14. For Yah, thy strong one, walketh in the midst of the camp. The Most High was in our camp moving about. So when you hear that JC came as man to walk in the midst, or, or came down as God to walk in the midst of man, it is blasphemous. It's a lie, and I want you to understand that because the Most High has always been in our camps moving about. You have to consider that. Once again, verse 14, For you are thy strong one walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. So the video has not too long been released. Can two walk together lest they be agreed? So once the Most High sees any unholy thing or unclean thing in us, he can't walk with us. We are a holy people unto him. For he is holy. And so if we're holy and he is holy, we can walk together. But once we make an error, and start doing things contrary to his instruction. And anything contrary to this law is unholy and wicked. And once that happens, he will depart from us. So you have to be mindful of that. Now, let's move to Deuteronomy. We are in the same chapter, chapter 23. We'll move down to uh, verse 17. Verse 17 of Deuteronomy, chapter 23. It reads, there shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Now, many of you have daughters. You have given your daughters condoms. You have taken her to the doctor to give her or to get her uh, prescribed, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pills in which she cannot get pregnant. All right? In other words, you have pretty much given your daughter a green light. You've had boyfriends coming to the house. She's going out to her boyfriend. She's been given pills in which she cannot get pregnant and condoms. You're prostituting your daughter to be a whore. This thing ought not to be done. The man that she lays down with is to be her husband. This is to keep the whoredom out of the land of Israel. 
out of our nation. And because you have failed to do this thing, you have many of our young women, by the time they're 30, they've probably had five, six, seven or more lovers, have been married to none of them, and have at least two or three children by the time they're 30 and unmarried. And no one wants to marry them. No one wants to marry a whore. No one wants to marry a woman that's been ran through, full of emotional problems, psychological problems, because of this very thing. So we're to teach this to our daughters at a very early age. That way we do not encourage them to be whores. We do not give them condoms. We do not give them birth control pills. Any of these things, we're to teach them the words of the Most High. And this is one of the reasons for our plight. We have walked contrary to this. And some of you may think, oh, well, they're going to do it anyway, and that's a cop-out. In other words, what you're saying is you refuse to walk in the Most High's law. Now, let's look at the latter part of that verse. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Homosexuality is a sin. It's a crime. It's punishable by death. It is a disgusting behavior. Yet, our women are always hugged up and laughing up with homosexual men and encouraging them. I know of a group where the females are always hugging up with these sorry homosexual males. And the males are laughing and talking just as loud as the women are. It's the most disgusting thing you'd want to see. And I don't see how they tolerate this. And I know why they tolerate it, because they do not walk in the most high's law. But I cannot see how a female with any sense or any understanding of this law would even be tolerant of a man that acts like she does and carries himself in that fashion, speaks as if he's a female and walks as a female and is attracted to males. This is the sickness of our nation and of our women. Furthermore, you cannot possibly say you are pro-family and some of us, you know that we're called black people in the many nations. We are the house of Israel. That's what we are. But I will use the term black people because that's what we're familiar with. We have to understand you can't be pro-black or pro-black -pro family and be pro-gay or pro-LBGT, uh, whatever they call themselves. Because two men cannot procreate. Neither can two females procreate. If you read Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13, you understand clearly this is punishable by death. And it ought not to be done. So you cannot be tolerant of such behavior if you are pro-Israelite family. For the simple fact that you may think it doesn't affect you. He's a homosexual. He can stay over there. It doesn't affect me. But your sons and your daughters sees this. It affects them. They should not have to see it. It should not exist. So you should not be encouraging of it in any way, shape, or form. And you can't be pro that and be pro-life. You can't be pro that, pro gay, and be for the Most High and His laws. They are contradictory. So you understand that. Now, we will move to Deuteronomy, the next chapter, chapter 24. Chapter 24, and we'll read verse 4. Verse 4 is for edification. Some of you may have done this thing, some of you may. Be considering to do this thing. And I want you all to be aware that this thing is a no-go. It is not to be done. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 4. And it reads, Her former husband, which sent her away, divorced her, may not take her again to be his wife. After that she is defiled. For this is an abomination before Yah. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin which Yah thy strong one giveth thee for an inheritance. What this is letting you know, man of Israel, is that what you are not to do, you are not to remarry your ex-wives. Once you have divorced that woman, she is to be left alone. 
to go into her after that she is defiled it's an abomination you're not to do it so that is for your edification if you ever let it cross your mind that oh man I think I'm going to get back with my ex-wife if you're walking in this law you know that's a no-go now Deuteronomy still in chapter 24 we will jump to verse 9 verse 9 reads of Deuteronomy chapter 24 take heed in the plague of leprosy that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you. As I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Verse 9. Remember what Yah thy strong one did unto Miriam by the way. After that you are come forth out of Egypt. We are to remember what the Most High did to Miriam. And there's a reason for that. The Most High made Miriam white. He made her white because she and Aaron both, both the siblings of Moses, had spoken ill of Moses after he had married an Ethiopian woman. So the Most High appeared in the door of the tabernacle, called both of them and scolded them for this. And he made Miriam white. Why is that important? Why are we to remember that? We're to remember that because there's only two cases of leprosy in this book. One is Miriam and one was uh, Nahum and Gazi, the Nahum and Gazi situation. One man, he was just greedy. He was greedy and he's a liar. Most High made him white and made all his seed white, his children after him white. So this man was a symbol of, sea, uh, of greed and lying. Now, Miriam had upset the Most High when she spoke ill of Moshe. So the Most High made her white. I think she was white for a week. Now, when she was made white, Aaron cried unto the Most High, Lay not this sin upon us. Because she looked like someone, like a child, that's, that came out of the womb. If you took your hand and soaked it in water for about two hours, you will kind of lose, it will lose its complexion. It becomes pale, it becomes white, it becomes pasty. So what is clear when we remember what the Most High did to Miriam, what becomes clear to us is that the house of Israel were not white. <clears throat> they were not white. Why? Because he made her white. If she was white already, what would be the use of that? And Aaron was horrified when he saw this thing and ask for her to be returned back to her normal color. Because that's a strange thing for us to see. So understand, when you are white-skinned in this book, you have terribly upset the Most High. And that was not the look of our people. That's for edification's sake. So the Christian now tells you, uh, hey, uh, well, we don't believe he was white. Speaking to this JC idol, we don't believe he was white. We, we feel as though he's, he was Mediterranean. He was olive skin. That's what they call him. He was of an Arabic type descent. <clears throat> and, you know, they're liars anyway. And idolaters anyway. And I've always asked him, well, <clears throat> if you feel that JC is the son of God, he's not. But if you feel that way, and okay, now you're, you're able to say that you, you know he's not white. He's a fictional character, but we'll play this game. <clears throat> so now you're saying that he's Arab or he's Middle Eastern. If that's the case, then why are the many nations, the many European nations and governments, why are they bombing the Arab people? You would think if you know that if you if you believed if these government believed JC was God right and they believed that JC came from that that area of Arabia and those were his people why have these nations been dropping bombs on these people for the past 20 years 
something for you to consider. Now, <clears throat> let's go to let's go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty six. Deuteronomy chapter twenty six, and we will deal with verse eighteen and verse nineteen. Verse eighteen of Deuteronomy chapter twenty six reads. And Yah has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he has promised thee, and that thou mayest keep all his commandments. Verse 19. And to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto Yah thy strong one, as he hath spoken. So once again, we are above all nations on the face of the earth. We are a peculiar people unto the Most High and the Most High alone. We are a people, a holy people. And the Most High said that we will be above them in praise in name and in honor. So that is how special you are. That is how special we are. But all of these blessings have been stripped from us. So if you're real tired of what you're seeing, then you know exactly what you must do in order to regain this status back, to regain this position back. We must return back to the laws. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, I've got a lesson that I will put up after this one. And the title of that lesson will be called, I Have a Headache. And you will see why I call it, why I titled it that. So, that lesson will follow this lesson that I'll, I'll be putting up here shortly. So we understand clearly that it was spoken of that we are special and holy people unto the Most High. We are. But we have lost all of those benefits because we have walked contrary to the Most High. So we are to correct the errors of our ways. All right? We're to correct the errors of our ways. Now, let's move on down to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, we will read verse 1. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, from 1 through 15, list our curses, list our blessings, excuse me. After that, our curses are listed. So we were listed, hey, these are the good things that will happen to you. You'll be above all nations. Be above them. You don't follow these laws, you're going to be beneath them. And we can validate this fact because right now, the house of Israel is beneath everyone in every nation. So the Most High is proving to us day to day that his word is true. What you have to do is acknowledge it. Because the only way you're going to be able to acknowledge and to verify this text, you have to first of all read it. Second of all, you have to bear witness. A witness sees. So you will be able to go into this text look at your current circumstances and say, you know what? The Most High is indeed true to His Word because I can verify that what He has said and is saying is indeed happening to me in, my, in front of my very face. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Verse 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 28 reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yah thy strong one, to observe and to do all His commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yah thy strong will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the stipulation is, if you are to observe and to do all these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, in so doing, this is your position. To walk contrary to this instruction, your position will be the reversal of the former. <clears throat> I'm going to put you on high. You're going to have all these blessings. 
and these people, these nations will be terrified of you. But you don't do this. You're going to be the bottom of all nations and they're going to disrespect and kill you and murder you without reprisal. You understand? So we know exactly what has happened. We have war contrary. And so therefore, we are at the bottom of the barrel in all the nations. This is not to be. We are the cause of our own plight. And we can fix this. That's why it's going to be important for you to check out the video, I Have a Headache. I've got that coming up after this one. All right. So we've covered the start of Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, where we understand clearly there are stipulations to this. I don't understand why. The house, what I do understand, but where are people that want something for nothing? I want you to realize that has always been our mindset. You know, we want to be on high. But we don't want to put in the work. We don't want to obey the laws. All right? Look at our people. You know who we are. We are the same no matter where you go. Same mindset, same people. We may speak different languages because of those who have captured us. But our spirit is still the same. We want something for nothing. We want something for free. We want something without work. Okay? Or without too much work. Not all of us, but a vast majority of us, we're trying to get it on the low. We're trying to get it for nothing. You know, you want this word, you want this understanding, you're not getting it for nothing. You have to read at this channel. If you ever see anyone with the names on this channel, or the name of this channel, ever ask you for money, you better not send them a dime. You will re be redeemed without money. I will never ask you for a dime. What I'm asking you for is your time. You must read. You must study. You must consider. And you must return on to this laws to save yourself. No one can save you. And you can't save anyone else. You can't save your sons and your daughters. They have to turn themselves. Okay, so, you know, there's no money involved in your redemption none zero not one dime now we have moved through to we've, we've covered it with Deuteronomy now let's go to Judges the book of Judges and we will go to verse 2 Ch chapter 2 the book of Judges excuse me book of Judges chapter 2 we're at the book of Judges Chapter 2, we will read verse 10 through verse 15. The book of Judges, chapter 2, and we will start at verse 10. And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. All that generation of Israel were gathered unto their fathers. They died, they were placed in sepulchres, family cemeteries, with their fathers before them. You're not going to see anywhere where anyone died and went to heaven with God. You're not going to see where anyone died and went to hell. This is a myth. All right? Now, once again, verse 10, chapter 2, Judges. And also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. They were dead and were buried. And there arose another generation their seed after them, which knew not Yah. So a generation that knew Yah passed away, they were gathered unto their fathers, buried and put in sepulchres, i.e. cemeteries, and their seed after them knew not the Most High. In other words, they didn't know who the Most High was, didn't know of any of the great things he did for us as he brought us out of captivity, and certainly didn't know his law. Now, verse 11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yah and served Baalim, idol. And they forsook Yah, the strong one of their fathers. They forsook the God of their fathers, took his law, stood behind their backs, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them. And they bowed themselves unto them and provoked Yah to anger. 
All right, let's back this up because there's something important in this verse that you need to take heed of. Let's reread verse 12. And they forsook the God of their fathers. So this new generation that was raised up forsook the God of their fathers. Their fathers are the ones that we read of in verse 10. That generation that had passed on. Then this new generation came up. And well, yeah, well we, man, we ain't listening to what Pastor talking about. I'm listening to what my forefathers talk about. My grandfather, my father. So they totally ignored what their parents may have taught them. So they didn't know the most high. So let's read verse 12. And they forsook the strong one of their fathers. Totally disregarded the most high. Which brought them out of the land of Egypt. Okay. So, the God of their fathers is the God that brought those Israelites out of Egypt. That's who God really is. So, the question now is, if you believe in J.C., my question to you is, did J.C. bring Israel out of Egypt? If you think that's God, did he bring us out of Egypt? He did not, meaning he is not God. So cut that nonsense out. Now, so therefore so, the God that brought us out of Egypt and took a hold of the God of the people that was round about them. You in the Western Hemisphere, we're in the midst of Europeans, Asians, and everyone else. We're not to take a hold of the gods of the people that's round about us. We're to take a hold of the God that delivered us out of Egypt. J.C. did not deliver us out of Egypt. The Muslim God didn't bring us out of Egypt. The Hindu God didn't bring us out of Egypt. And Haile Selassie didn't bring us out of Egypt. These roster men and their nonsense. These, these rosters smoke too much dope. All right. That's for you Rastafarians out there in Guyana, Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, all my West Indian people. You know who you are. All right. Rosters and their madness. Rosters don't eat meat. Now, if you understand these laws and how this temple work and how the sacrifices work, you will know clearly that these priests, the Levites, eat of those sacrifices. These sacrifices are meat sacrifices. Goats, lambs, rams, oxen, etc. So how the roster man figure he can't he can't eat meat? That's silly. And that goes for those in Demona as well who are also vegetarians. If you don't want to eat meat, that's fine. There's no knock on that. But don't push that as in we are not supposed to eat meat. Because clearly we are. That's why we have Passover. Our people, I tell you. All right. So we have discussed. Oh, we're going to, we're going to uh, verse 15. We're going to verse 15. So we've read verse 12 several times. All right. Now let's go to verse 13. And they forsook Yah and served Baal and Asteroth. These are two idols. Verse 14. And the anger of Yah was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers. That spoiled them, robbed them, stripped them. And he sold them onto the hands of their enemies. Were we not sold into the hands of our enemies? Look at how we're treated in the Western Hemisphere and everywhere else. We are not slaves. Our ancestors were not slaves. We have to look at the terminology and the verbiage when we speak. We are not the descendants of slaves. We are the descendants of the children of Jacob. We are the sons of Israel. We are the children of the Most High who were enslaved. But we are not slaves. Nor are we the descendants of slaves. We are the descendants of Jacob. Whose name was changed to Israel. We are the descendants of those people who were enslaved. These are human beings. I want you to understand that. All right. Let's read verse 14. And the anger of Yah was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not 
any longer stand before their enemies. You ever looked at our people? Look at our men. Our men are by far physically dominant over any other being on the earth. I, I'm certain you know that. We dominate in everything when it comes to dominance. Physically, we are we are the supermen of the earth. And if you think for one second that all black people are the same, <clears throat> there's no Michael Jordans in Africa. There's no Mike Tysons in Africa. There's no one in Africa with a Whitney Houston voice and Anita Baker voice. If there were Michael Jordans in Africa, then the NBA would be in Africa signing up all kind of Africans. They're not. Though we may look alike and we may be considered we're all Africans, that's a general blanket term. And keep in mind that the term and the name Africa is that of a European Leo Scipio Africanus. So the, all the African nations, what they need to do is get together and have one of the African conference and change the name of that continent back to Eden because that's what it is. Now, we are not Although we all look the same, we're not all the same. Our phenotypes are quite different, so our athletic ability and any other ability for that matter of fact. So we are not all the same people, and we are not to even take that into consideration that we are. Now, we were given into the hands of our enemies. Now, anyone that will enslave you, number one, that will make rules against you to ensure that your children are at the bottom of the barrel and so are you and that you will never get ahead of them that you will never live in the midst of them that have made rules to keep you from having jobs to keep you from being prosperous to keep you from being successful etc anyone that make laws to do these things anyone that will enslave you belittle you lock you up unjustly and run medical experiments upon you will put you in the military and send you where you will be killed while sending other soldiers in more safer places anyone that will do these things to you and your children and your seed are your enemies so we have been treated as enemies because we are in the midst of our enemies and we have failed to recognize that we continue to try to make peace with those who have never shown themselves to be peaceful towards us or our people. These are things that we must consider. So we are not able to stand before our enemies. So with all the muscles we've got and the ability to fight, I mean, we are combats, the best of them. <clears throat> the men of Israel are. But yet, when we face our enemies, we are weak. A man of Israel step on another man of Israel Jordans, right then you've got to fight. Right off the bat, knuckles are swinging. But when one of your enemies take your daughters and slam her head on the concrete or pick her up in the classroom and dump her on her head in front of everybody in the camera for you to see, when your enemies kill your sons, you want to march. You want to get on the TV and cry out. And then probably go in the back room and get a check. But you will not stand before your enemies. But you will stand before your brother and make him to be your enemy. And you haven't figured out why this is. You need to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and watch the curses that was put in the midst of our people. And this is why we are like this. So you will fight your brother over stepping on his shoes. But when your enemies kill your son in cold blood in your sight, you and those like you will do nothing. And what our people are, are to realize that we're cowards. Our men are. Now, and I'm talking 99.999% of them, they're fearful of their enemies. And that is because you don't walk in this law. And the Most High said you'll be fearful of them. So here's the myth that's going around in the Christian churches with our people. 
Oh, God, don't give you a spirit of fear, blah, blah, blah. God has never given me a spirit of fear. You people are the biggest lies I know about. <clears throat> because you are the most scared people I know. <clears throat> scared of your boss on the job. Scared the cops going to pull you over. You're scared of everything. You're fearful for your children going to school. You're fearful for your son when he gets in his car. He's 17 years old when a cop pulls him over. You're teaching him how to bow and how to cower to heathens because you're fearful of them and you teach him to be fearful also. So this thing about God is not giving you a spirit of fear. Yeah, he has. That's why you're scared. That's why you're scared when you see the cops and scared for everything else and about everything else because he did put a spirit of fear on you. Go read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and tell me where he gave you a spirit of bravery. Show me where that is. That's why you're in the midst of these nations scared and crying every day. Terrified. I can't believe this is happening in 2018 when you just saw your son got shot down in the street. You can't believe it. Where have you been? Now, <clears throat> we were at 14. He said that he would sell us into the hands of our enemies. He did that. There are enemies who are around about us. And that we would no longer stand before our enemies. You refuse to stand before your enemies because you're scared. That's number one. But you can't stand before your enemies. Because the Most High said he's going to make it so you can't do that. So when you run around talking about God didn't give you a spirit of fear. You're contradicting what he's saying. In other words, you're blaspheming him. You're to consider that. Verse 15. And that's the last verse in Judges. Before we go to chapter 10 of Judges. Verse 15 reads. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of Yah was against them for evil. Now. The Most High's hand was against the house of Israel for evil. And you think Satan is responsible for evil. Most High said, I kill, I make alive. I wound, I heal. I do all these things. So when you see evil as the Most High breaking you off, I've told you this in many videos. There is no such thing as no Satan doing harm to you. This is taught to you by your enemies. It is foolishness. It is blasphemous. And words contrary to the Most High. Now back to verse 15. Whithersoever they went out, wherever we went out, the hand of Yah was against us for evil. As Yah had said, and as Yah had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Are you not distressed in these nations, Israel? You are. So you can validate that you are indeed distressed. Now, speaking of that distress, let me cover something. The Most High made us deaf, blind, and put the fatness on our heart. Now, we know if someone is deaf and blind, the terminology that we use for them is dumb. So, a dummy, someone who is deaf and blind to this law, a dummy got on my channel, and actually put up a link. And then he put some words up. Pertaining to. Uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But we are fighting against principalities. And all the other garbage. Of the New Testament. Now. He knows who he is. That did this. So here this is for, specifically for this dummy. And what I'm saying. You're a dummy. It's not to be disparaging is I'm acknowledging that your eyes are shut and you can't see and your ears are stopped up and your heart is made fat and you can't understand. Let me explain something to you. <clears throat> Number one, <clears throat> the most high rules these kingdoms. Let me say that again. The most high rules these kingdoms. So if you're talking about we are facing or fighting against principalities. Principalities are governments. The Most High runs these governments. Daniel chapter 4. So now. <clears throat> we're fighting against spirits in wicked and high places. That's garbage. 
the man that's kicking your son in the teeth and shooting him down in the street and slamming your daughter's face in the curb is a man that's breathing. He smells. He needs a shower. And if you punch him in the face, he'll get a black eye. So there's nothing spiritual about him. He's a physical man that has enslaved your ancestors, that has made laws against you. This is not Casper the Ghost. So you're going to have to stop making all these cowardly excuses as if you're fighting some, some ghost someplace. What you are fighting and what we are fighting, we are fighting the Most High. The Most High runs these kingdoms. He delivered us into the hands of our enemies. Our enemies are in these kingdoms and he has put a spirit upon them to treat us this way because he's running the show. So when you start dealing about we're fighting against principalities, yeah, we are. The ones that's running these principalities are the most high. We're fighting against him. We're fighting against his law. We're walking contrary to this law. And provided we do this, he's going to bust us over the head for it in all these nations. Why? Because the most high is running these nations. But he gave us an out. He said if we would return to him with our whole heart and our whole soul, he will cause our enemies to be at peace with us. In the midst of these nations, Daniel was in captivity, but he walked after the Most High's law, and he was shown favor in the midst of his enemies. And though we are in the midst of our enemies in these nations, should we turn to this law, we get relief. Because these people are only doing what they're doing to us because we refuse to follow this law. We turn to this law with our whole heart and our whole soul. The Most High runs these nations. And he has put a spirit upon these people to do what they're doing. So the minute we turn back to him, it will cause our enemies to have compassion upon us and cause them to be at peace with us. So this old Casper the Ghost we fighting, Satan garbage, is garbage. What we have been fighting and what we have been opposition to is this law. And the faster we can understand that and stop talking this JC nonsense and that we're fighting some spiritual beings garbage, the better off we will be. All right. So we have covered those 15 judges, 2, 10 through 15. We've done that. Now, we will go to Judges, and we will jump down. Let's jump to uh, chapter 10. Judges chapter 10. I'm making sure I get a chance to read these scrolls, this text, and speak to you as I read it. That way you can start connecting the dots. Because when you hear it, and you come into this book and read it, and you look around and see it, then you can validate that it is true. Now, Judges, chapter 10. Judges, chapter 10, and we are at verse 13. Judges, chapter 10, verse 13, and verse 13 reads, Yet ye have forsaken me, this is the Most High speaking, and served other gods. Christian gods, Muslim gods, Hindu gods, you know, you, you, the Rastafarian gods, you name them. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. That's why you're stuck in all these nations. Verse 14, listen to this. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Go cry to JC. Go cry to Haile Selassie and the Muslim God, and the Hindu God, and any other of these gods, these idols that you've chosen. Go cry to them. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. All right. <clears throat> Let's cover that. You go crying. I've seen a video where a woman was crying out to JC while her man was being shot, gunned down in her face. Screaming for the name of the idol. Idol did not deliver. Her nor him. Saw another video where a young man 
effeminate, real nasty, with his woman. I don't know how a woman would want to deal with a man that acts like a woman, but he's screaming, oh, get this demon away from me, blah, blah, blah. Man, them cops grabbed that joke and snatched him out of that car so fast. We seem to think there is some kind of protection turned into this Christian idol. There is none. Look back over the past 400 years. At what point have any of our forefathers been protected? We've been calling on this thing for over 400 years in these lands. At what point were we given relief? At what point when we cried out to this idol, at what point have we been delivered out of this tribulation? Zero. That is why we are still marching and crying and dying for the same things that our forefathers have. This is an idol that cannot deliver anything to you. So the Most High is going to make this thing plain for you to understand because he's got to repay you to your face. Judgment comes to those who are alive. Ain't no such thing as a dead man, <clears throat> excuse me, being judged. No place. Dead man can't feel pain. <clears throat> dead man can't see. So to bear witness, you got to see this thing. You got to experience it. And he's going to repay you to your face. So, these idols... that you're calling upon. Let's look here in South Carolina. Dylan Roof, I believe is the guy's name. He walks into a church, guns down nine, nine Israelites. <clears throat> we look through the history. We see where our enemies have burnt down these churches. You're seeing where these individuals in these churches are corrupt and stealing money. You see where they are laying down with people's wives. You see where they're actually abusing these children, the homosexuals. <clears throat> Number one, it's not the house of God anyway. You know this by now. These are idolaters, <clears throat> worshiping idols. And we continue to lean on them and to seek this out. And it has been to our hurt. It has not helped us one iota. So as we continue to lean and cry on these idols, which we have chosen, the most I said, let me go ahead and uh, as I decide to bust you upside your head, call on these JC and whomever else you believe in and let him deliver you. Well, we've been crying and haven't figured out that this ain't working. But we will. Most High said he will make the crooked way straight. And those who murmur will learn doctrine. That's why you're at this channel. <clears throat> now, and we wanted to go to verse 13. So that's. Let me, one second, one second. We have read, we read the verse 14, correct. 14, now let's go to 15. And the children of Israel said unto Yah, we have sinned. So this is those of us who have acknowledged our faults. We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee this day. So once we had realized, man, we're praying to idols. We are wrong. This JC and all these other deities in the Rastafarian island, they're not delivering us. Our condition is still the same. We're seeing it get worse. So there will be those of us who will realize this is not working. We need to turn back. We're going in the wrong direction. So we turn back to seek the most highest face in his laws. And once we do that, then we have to turn to him, face Jerusalem, lift our hands in prayer and confess our faults. As we're doing right here. So once we do that, we got to then we have to denounce, denounce and put away these idols. Now, verse 16. And they put away the strange gods from among them. We got them. They're in your houses. You got the JC cross in your house, the picture of JC in there. And I don't care if you got a black, white, or Chinese, he's an idol. Get rid of it. Get that cross off your neck. It's an abomination unto the Most High. It's a graven image. It's an accursed thing. Now, once again, verse 16. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served Yah. That's what you are to do. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. 
We pierced the most high. And we're not talking about no nails on no cross nonsense. We hurt the most high. When your child disobeys you and you have to whip them, as a parent, it hurts you. It pierces you to do this. But you do this because you know good and well it has benefit as far as teaching them which way to go. So it must be done. It's called correction, stripes, affliction. All right? Now, so we have gotten to 15. Uh, we cover Judges, verse 10 through 16. All right. <clears throat> Now, from Judges, we have two more to go, and I'm happy that I was able to actually finish this lesson because I've gotten all the way to the very last verse, and a virus hit me last night, and so I had to redo this, but all spirit and praises to the Most High that I'm able to get it done today. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel. We've got two more verses to go. 1 Samuel. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. And we will read verse 47. And verse 47 of First Samuel chapter 17 reads, And all this assembly shall know, have knowledge of, not believe, shall know, that Yah saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is Yah's, and he will give you into our hands. So, I want you to understand that all the guns that the house of Israel may want to get to protect themselves, our protection is the most high in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. If we are to turn to that, therein lies our protection. So, we're not being saved because of how many guns we've got. I want you to understand that the house of Israel, here's what the men of Israel don't own and will not be allowed to own. We don't have any fighter jets. We don't make fighter jets. We don't make tanks. We don't make rockets, mustard gas, or any gas agents. Any weapons of war we do not manufacture. The house of Israel, we do not. Our enemies do. They are the God of forces. Their God is weaponry and violence. That's why they make weapons of war and weapons of violence. So what you're going to see, the power of the Most High, is that we are weaponless. We are poor. We have no standing army. And we're going to beat the brakes off these nations. I want you to remember that. They will take this L. And we won't have any tanks, trains, planes, and anything else. But they're going to take this L against some people who are weaponless. Because the Most High will fight this battle for us. You are to remember that. All right. Now... <clears throat> the very last, the very last verse, the very last verse, and we will conclude this lesson. Let's go to 1 Kings. We're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 9. 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 9, and we'll read verse 1 through 9 of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 9. We're reading 1 through verse 9. And 1 Kings chapter 1 reads, this is the covenant with Solomon. And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of Yah and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that Yah appeared to Solomon the second time. This is the second time the Most High appeared unto Solomon as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. Verse 3. And Yah said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house. That's the first temple which thou hast built. 
to put my name there forever. You need to kind of look up what forever may mean. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. That's forever. Verse 4. And if thou will walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments. Verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. So understand that the throne that's being established forever is not no throne of J.C. It's the throne of the seed of David. As I promised David thy father. Saying, they shall not fill thee a man upon the throne of Israel. The most high had promised David. David, you walk in my statues and do these things. A man of your seed, one of your sons, will always sit before me on my throne, provided the house of Israel is gathered as a nation. So when we return back in the nation, our governor will be a direct seed of David. It will be one of his sons. It's not going to be somebody, it's a car. It's not going to be somebody from Asher or anything like that. He's going to be a Judite. He's going to be a son of David. And that's who's going to be leading us. So you understand that. Verse 6. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, idolatry, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. He's going to cut us off. And this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight. I'm going to destroy it. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all the nations. That's why they call you all the many names that they do no matter where you go. Verse 8. And this house which is high Everyone that passes by it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath Yah done thus unto this land and to this house? Why did the Most High do this to the land, made the land desolate? And why did he destroy this house? Verse 9 And they shall answer, because they forsook. Yah, their strong one, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt. Let me stop there. I say again, the question to you would be this. How are you going to say JC is God when we are clearly reading that the God of Israel delivered us out of Egypt. My question to you is, did JC deliver the house of Israel out of Misraim, out of Egypt? He didn't. He ain't God. Stop that nonsense. Now, let's reread verse 9, for it is the last verse. And they shall answer, because they forsook Yah, their strong one, who brought forth their fathers out of Egypt. So God brought us out of Egypt, not J.C. And have taken hold upon other gods, took a hold of J.C., took a hold of Haley Selassie and all the other idols, and have worshipped them, worshipped them and serve them in these churches, in these mosques, in these synagogues. Therefore hath Yah brought them all this evil. So, let me reread that latter verse one time. Therefore hath Yah brought upon them all this evil. So the Most High brought evil upon his people because what we have done, we forsook him, number one, took a hold of all these other gods, and that upset him. And so he brought evil upon us, and he scattered us, took away our names, our heritage, and put us in these lands, have us speaking all types of weird languages, and serving these strange gods. 
So I want you to understand that the Most High sent the sword after Israel. He brought evil upon us. Nowhere did he dial up Satan for this. Most High brings evil to you. He's responsible for all things. So this old Satan is responsible for evil nonsense. Remove that foolishness from your thinking. It is a myth taught to you by your enemies. All right. That concludes this lesson. I want you to understand clearly that we are a special people unto the Most High. We are to be above all nations on the face of the earth. We are to be a holy people. But for us to be a holy people, we must first return back to him who is holy. That, are, that would be these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. In so doing, there lies our protection. So, to find relief from our day-to-day -day struggles or our day-to-day -day headaches when it pertains to our enemies, our only relief is to return to the Most High and His laws. Therein lies our protection. We are to be a holy people. These laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, this is our wisdom to the nations. It is not a vain thing. This thing is our life through this law. We will prolong our days. All right, Israel. It's been one hour and 23 minutes thus far. I'm happy that I was able to get this lesson done. I've got another lesson I've, I've mentioned to you already. I have a headache. I would like to do that, but uh, I'm going to go golf with my buddies. And after this round of golf, I come back later on this evening. I hope to get this uh, get this uh, this lesson completed. I hope uh, thus far for those of you who may be new to the channel and those of you who have been here for some time, I hope that this word continues to fuel you and that you're continuing to grow in the most highest laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Anything that I say here to you, you're to validate it. I understand that some of you may just want to listen to this, but I want you to always read along with it that you may verify it that you may bear witness with your own eyes that it can be validated. Okay, that way when you speak on it, you speak on something that you know, moreover, you can say, okay, whatever it is you tell someone, they are going to have questions. And you have to be able to say, okay, look, go here. So you should be able to find it, point it out for them to read it. And also to be able to explain it in a fashion that they may be able to better grasp it. However, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding comes by one way, and that is returning to the Most High's law. Keep in mind, the law is not a vain thing, okay? And the law is where we will have an increase in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So we're not to forsake the Most High's law and chuck it behind our backs. Uh... I encourage you to continue to stay in this law because what's going on currently, you're seeing the upheaval in the earth and you're seeing the struggles in you know of our people increase and you'll see that more and more because what is getting ready to happen and it's already happening, the Most High is taking the curses that's been placed upon us and putting it upon our enemies. So I've told you in previous videos, you'll see the increase in the violence in the midst of them. And we will be sitting back watching this. And we already have put the word out to them because we are to deliver this message to the nations. That these things are to befall them. So they will know it's no accident. So therefore they will understand clearly who the men of Israel really are. They will understand clearly who the children of God truly is. And once these things begin to befall them. And they are absolutely stripped. And the children of Israel can no longer depend upon their enemies for bread. Then they will have to seek answers. And they will have to seek in turn to the Most High. And that is why we are here to send this message to all Israel. That we understand clearly that we are to lean upon the Most High and none other. For those who lean upon the gods of their enemies, those who lean upon the idols, we can see clearly after 400 years 
of affliction in these nations, we can see clearly there has been no relief and these idols of these nations have not delivered us. Moreover, as the plight in all of our curses are placed upon our enemies, we will see clearly that not only did that, that their idol did not work for us, we can see we will be able to see clearly that their own idol will not work for them and will not deliver them. And that is when the fear of the Most High will come upon them. And that is when the fear of the Most High will come upon those of Israel who have taken a hold of the idols of these nations and their enemies. And thus you will see the magnifying of the Most High's law and you will see the magnifying of those who have promulgated and professed the Most High's law and His holy name. So the channel is growing and it will continue to grow because as the affliction increases, everyone will start to seek answers. And the only answer and the only way out, this goes for the house of Israel and for those of the nations who are if a contrite spirit. There's only one way out of this, alive, out of this affliction and out of this, uh, this judgment. One way out of it is the most highest law and there's absolutely no other way. So our people have been speaking about we need to get on code. You know, black people need to get on code, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have a code. We have a code of conduct. In this, in these many nations, we just seem to do what we want to do. Every man has pretty much gone his own way. We do have one standard and is nigh unto us. We all have it, regardless of what nation we live in. We have the standard by which we are to live by. It is called the law, the most high's law. And I encourage you to take a hold of it and don't let go. And I encourage you to share that information with those who are around you. It is our only saving grace to return back onto this law, for we have tried everything else and it, it has not worked. We've tried education, we've tried marching, we've tried crying, praying, begging. Praying will not work when you're praying to idols. So, turn, face Jerusalem, lift your hands in prayer, acknowledge your faults, and turn yourself over to the Most High as law, statute, judgments, precepts. All right, Israel, it's been one and a half hours of this lesson. Blessed be the name of Yah the King, the creator of heaven and earth, and all there is above the heavens and the earth the fountain of living waters, and the only Savior, the only Savior of the house of Israel and the inhabitants of the earth who will seek after the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Peace, Israel.